Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And I've got some exciting World of Tanks news for you today, including two brand new vehicles that I'm briefly going to be going over. And that is that Wargaming are teasing us with Season 7 of the Battle Pass, currently with the 1.16 test server. Wargaming just announced the three vehicles that will be featured in the upcoming Season 7 of the Battle Pass. So all of you World of Tanks grinders out there, you're going to be very happy to hear that it's going to be coming back filled with all sorts of goodies for you to be able to earn. You're going to be able to get your hands on the Cranvong Leopard 1 and T124 skins. And of course, if you decide to play any of those core vehicles, then you're going to be able to accelerate your progress through the Battle Pass, as well as also being able to get some commanders, which I believe come with two skills, including Brothers in Arms for free, which is incredibly useful, and you're going to get yourself two new tanks, which I'll be talking about in a second, but if you don't care about those new vehicles, you can get yourself tons of bonds instead, which is always nice inside World of Tanks. So why don't we take a look at the new skins? So firstly, there is the only dust skin for the Leopard. When you start it at level one, you're going to have some fancy stuff on the top of your Leopard, and you're going to be able to upgrade it to having a searchlight on the front and some grills on the on the front of the upper plate of the hull. And it looks like you've also got machine guns starting to magically appear on top of the vehicle. Third one, well, it looks like you get some sandbags on the back and whoa totally changes the side of these protection plates over the tracks and then what will level four look like for the complete leopard whoa some ammo boxes on the back what a surprise that kind of makes the tank look quite fat but i do like the camo on the back as well a lot of people will like the writer design for the leopard yeah next there's shattered windows aka freight train for the t110e4 starting off with just some links over the front for where i guess the space protection will be attached or maybe just handles for being able to stow everything that you want to put on the vehicle talking about putting things on the vehicle i do like the dust shield over the mantlet there that's pretty cool and this whole thing on the front that looks very much like the 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 t30 skin for the rng for the 10 years of world of tanks anniversary we've got machine guns appearing out of nowhere barrels on the back we've even got some barbed wire there and then we have this thing fully decked out the searchlight loses its uh protection and reveals its true form and it looks like the tracks look different is it me or did the tracks just get bigger no it's just the fact that the uh the hull uh protection on the top is now frayed and is a little bit up above them. So quite a fetching style for the T124. It does make it look like a lot more of a chonky tank. That's usually what happens with all of these styles. There's one more to look at. This is the Trenton style. I don't know how to pronounce it. All my Swedish fans are probably going to be rolling over laughing at my pronunciation. For the Kranvang. So again, it looks like the base style has lots of rivets welded to the front of the hull and also on the turret. Level 2 is going to have some poles all the way down the side and also on the back you're going to have some boxes as well and some poles on top of the tank as well level three looks like you get some launchers on the top of the vehicle and a box on the barrel uh, a searchlight by the looks of it or at least some kind of scope maybe some improved sight for the gunner or the commander there although it does look like it's it's looking like the back of my phone a little bit with a few of the the cracks showing after the years and then what does level four look like wow wow looks like the launchers double the tracks again look like they get thicker but i think that's just because just like with the t124 the guard over the top of the track seems to have frayed and gone up and there's a now a big cable on the front as well very fetching very chunky and machine guns to the left and the right so you're gonna have to get through the battle pass as quickly as you can to be able to get them so one thing that's interesting about this battle pass is it's actually completely changing about how you can approach it previously you had to grind all the way through chapter one and you would choose a style to be able to grind for now i believe that you can approach the chapters however you want you can start you can stop you can save your progress then you can continue your progress which i think is great if maybe you only want to get three styles but you don't actually want to end up upgrading this so let's see i've already started chapter three i guess here Will I be able to switch out and instead do the Shattered Window chapter? Looks like you can. I can switch chapters. Doesn't like it cost me too much. And now I've got another style. So that's pretty funky. A, a good opportunity if you want to just get all of the base styles by the looks of it. Or more importantly, if maybe you want to target some of the specific rewards for the different stages of the chapter. And it looks like, unless they're going to be changing the system, that 
everybody is going to oh wait no oh sorry the bounty reward is for the the improved pass which you're gonna have to pay gold for Ooh, well at least everybody's going to get a token right and just what are you going to be able to spend your tokens on well unfortunately the store looks a little bit dry however sneaky baby went looking and thanks to MMOWG for leaking an image of what looks like two new vehicles that will be available in the upcoming season of the Battle Pass. So we have the K91 PT that's already in the game. That looks like the Object 7772, which is already in the game, and then the AE Phase 1. But between them, on the left and the right of the K91 PT, looks to be the Cobra and also the Lorraine. Lorraine 50T. Now, while these vehicles are available to look at on the awesome Tanks GG website, um, they just don't, it's not quite as fetching. And so with a little bit of mod trickery, we're actually able to add these vehicles to the comparison tab. And once we've added them to the comparison tab, that means that we are going to have access to their models in game where they're currently being tested. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, this is the first look at an upcoming tier 9 British medium tank in the form of the Cobra. So my first impressions of, of what the turret looks like, well it's very well angled. I wonder if when your opponents are below you that's going to be quite easy and if they're not maybe it's going to be quite easy above. We can go take a look on Tanks GG in a second for the armor model. It does look a bit like a Conway, if you know what I mean from that perspective. The turret is actually quite forward on the tank, which should mean that if it's got a lot of gun depression, that its armor will be very decent, and you're not going to have to expose too much of that quite chunky lower plate if your opponents are going to be out for you. So now, while I'm not going to do a full tank review for you today, I thought I'd just take a quick look at the statistics so you can have an idea of how excited to get about a tank like this. Well, immediately, four round autoloader with 360 damage, and it's also got high explosive squashed head rounds that deal 465 damage for 219 millimeters of penetration or you can fire high explosive rounds with 515 alpha damage with 120 millimeters of penetration holy smokes that means that you are going to be able to do with high explosive 2060 damage if you're able to penetrate the whole magazine with 120 millimeters of penetration 1860 damage if you're able to penetrate the 219 millimeters of high explosive squashed head, or if you decide to fire the high explosive anti-tank standard rounds on this tank, 1,440 damage in six seconds. That is pretty mind-boggling for a tier nine tank. Although when I think about it, something like the T-54E1 is bursting out 390 alpha damage at tier nine with I think about a 2.2 two two seconds intra clip reload so not that crazy for tier nine would definitely be insane for tier eight but remember these are tier nine reward vehicles the real downside is that it's not an auto reloader you're not going to be able to reload the shells one by one by one and a 60 second reload time oh goodness gracious um yeah i'm definitely going to be taking intuition on this tank because you are going to have to quickly change the shells depending on what tank you're going for. Need to destroy three self-propelled guns in the enemy base. You can use the HE. Need to go through a mouse from the front while well, you're definitely going to have to use the high explosive anti-tank rounds. Or maybe you've caught an IS-3 and you aim carefully at their frontal armor. Well, you're probably going to want the Hesh ammunition instead. However, ooh. Accuracy, 0.42, that's pretty horrendous. Four seconds aim time, that's pretty horrendous as well. Bloom after firing is really bad for a tank with two seconds intra-clip reload. 370 me be base meters view range is not going to be enough to be able to spot your opponents unless you invest coated optics, but there are some saving graces, like the 10 degrees of gun depression, the fact that it's not the slowest, but definitely not the fastest. Really quick backwards, actually. And the vehicle's armor, well, let's take a look to see how good it is. And I'm actually going to compare it to, I don't know, um, uh, an E50, because obviously with the high explosive rounds, it's not going to make too much sense. Ooh, 200 millimeters of effective upper hull armor, 
The lower plate is actually a troll bait, so you could bait your opponents into bouncing off the lower plate of this tank, and the turret is just an absolute freak. If you are using your 10 degrees of gun depression, it doesn't really help, because unfortunately, as with the Yo tanks, the, the turret is locked to the gun, which kind of sucks, which means that you're just never really going to have good turret armor. I guess what some people will do is try to raise the turret a little bit to try and bait people into shooting you, but that's really not going to help. This thing also has 30 millimeters of side armor, which means that all 105 millimeter caliber guns are going to, oh sorry, 91 millimeter caliber guns are going to overmatch it. Oh god, this thing does look like a little bit of a stinker with regards to its protection. Bit of a stinker with regards to its gun handling, but oh my word, a bit like a baby WTR V100 with being able to deliver up to 2,000 damage if you can pen the high explosive rounds in a single magazine. Anyway, stay tuned to the channel and make sure you subscribe so you are the first to know everything there is to know about this tank, including gameplay with an upcoming tank review. But the Cobra isn't going to be the only tank that you're going to be able to pick. You could also choose instead to get the Lorraine 50T. So the Lorraine 50T has some very steep competition at tier 9 heavy, obviously with the M AMX M451, which is probably one of the best heavy tanks tier for tier in the game. So I'm just wondering what a tank that looks a lot like the AMX M451 is going to bring to the table. I like the fact that there aren't very many weak points on top. I guess the machine gun's kind of covering one, but that's quite small. And if you're using gun depression, it's not going to really be spotable. Wow, look at this. Kind of like the 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 scope on the front or a searchlight. I'm not even sure what it is, but it Darn, it looks cool, and, and a fire extinguisher on the outside of the vehicle, not so useful when you're burning on the inside. All in all, it, it does look a lot like an AMX 5120 with an AMX um, uh, MLE, uh, the 51 turret on top of the tank. So let's take a look at the statistics on the awesome Tanks GG website to take a look to see what we have to look forward to. Okay, well, it's definitely not the DPM. That DPM's pretty shocking. What kind of gun does it have? A 120 millimeter caliber gun with decent penetration. Horrible aim time, though. The gun handling's not too bad, but yeah, pretty bad aim time on this tank. This kind of reminds me a bit of the vehicle that just went in, the WZ-114. Uh, you know, terrible aim time, terrible DPM but still a nice pokey gun, but this one doesn't have the alpha damage that has, and it definitely doesn't have the penetration either. But holy smokes, this thing's going to be fast. Look at that, 60 kilometers an hour forwards. It weighs 55 tons, and it's got a cracking engine power of 18, which will allow it to get up to its effective top speed. And oof, if you put a turbo on this thing, it's probably going to be one of the fastest heavies in the game, along with the AMX 50B and Tanks like the Object 260. Combine this with 400 meters base view range, which, uh, yeah, the Cobra definitely didn't have, and it will definitely be able to spot for itself. So it's quite a scary tank when I look at it, if it's going to have any armor. So let's take a look to see what its armor is like. Oh, oh, yes. Even if it's using its 10 degrees of gun depression, its hull armor is still only 150 to 180. Yeah, that's not very good. But it does have a chonky turret, you know? 300 millimeters of effective turret armor is definitely going to be decent. Wonder what happens if you're not using any of your gun depression. If you're not using any of your gun depression, your upper turret's going to have a couple of issues here and there. You do have a bit of a weak point that's exposed. But even if you're only using half of your gun depression, this is still a very chonky turret. I think this thing will be great. I think it'll be a lot like a Kranvang with regards to its hull armor sucks, but when it does manage to get into a position, it's going to be good. The thing that really holds it back is it doesn't have an autoloader and it doesn't have any DPM to go with it. But I can imagine this thing will be very fun for ramming your opponents. One thing that I just noticed, however, is it has only 30 millimeters of side armor and then 40 up there. So you are going to get overmatched as soon as you try to side scrape. This vehicle, it's going to be tricky to be able to not take damage unless you're literally sitting on a ridgeline. Does it look like a great tank? I wouldn't say it looks like a great tank. Does it look like it's going to have novel gameplay? No, the one with the novel gameplay is definitely going to be the super exciting Cobra. Obviously, Wargaming um, realized that people loved the Caliban and they're trying to bring in something freaky like the Caliban. British eccentrics rejoice. This is definitely going to be the tank for you. The Lorraine 50T will be more for the tank purists who want to have something which is a little less wacky, a little bit faster, and is going to have some frontal turret armor to be able to grind out its opponents. So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, definitely something to look forward to in World of Tanks. The Battle Pass, nah, if it's up in the test server and it's quite early in February still, is probably going to be our content for March I would expect. And considering how it says the seventh season of Epic Battle Pass activity kicks off in early March, 
yeah, I, I think that's a given. So really exciting. I really hope you all uh, enjoyed this video today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you liked the analysis on the Cobra and the Lorraine, yeah, give it a thumbs up. If you hated the video, however, make sure you give it a thumbs down so I get the feedback. And let me know in the comments what you think about the upcoming Battle Pass. What do you think about the fact that you can choose the chapter that you're going to do from the beginning? Do you think that changes anything at all? And what do you think about the two new vehicles that will be purchasable? Will you spend your points on the old tanks that maybe you missed out on last time or will you double down and be able to get the new ones? And which one do you think looks the best, the Cobra or the Lorraine 50T? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.